So if you'd like to generate maybe a little more heat between your sheets, you're in luck. Pay close attention this morning to Dr. Jen Berman, who joins us this morning in our Health Watch with five issues that could be sabotaging your sex life and your sex RX to fix that. It's great to have you here. This is, this is a big problem for a lot of people, but it's something that's tough to talk about. It, it really is. And I think that the whole saying 10 times makes a sexless marriage is a quick way to pathologize a lot of people's sex lives. And it's important to realize that our sex lives ebb and flow. The couple that's having sex five times a year this year can be the couple that's having sex five times a week next year under the right circumstances. So there's always something that comes into play here. But there are some common issues that can Definitely. really detract from your intimacy, from your sex life. Number one, and I've heard this a lot, is that TV in the bedroom? Technology in general. If for every hour you're watching TV, it's an hour you're not connecting with your partner and you're probably not having sex. If your laptop is on your lap, your partner's probably not. <laughs> so get the work out of the bedroom. Turn off the TV. Get it out. If you can't get it out of the bedroom, then at least limit it. It's funny because it seems like such a simple solution, but for a lot of people, it's tough to actually detach from those things. It's challenging. It's it really challenging. And one of those reasons is that people's days are so jam-packed, and you say you really need to take a look at your schedule, too. Too. We don't have great sex when we are overscheduled and exhausted and stressed out. So really do your best to reduce your stress. And also sometimes saying no to other people in your life means saying yes to your partner in bed. The next thing which I think is a problem, especially for a lot of women, is not feeling comfortable, not liking our own bodies, which doesn't make you feel very sexy and doesn't make you want to be intimate. It doesn't. And feeling terrible about your body does not make for great sex. It's important to really question the society's unrealistic standards of beauty and not buy into it and and be less self-critical. It's also important to connect with your partner, accept compliments. Sometimes just simply acting as if you feel great about your body can make you feel a whole lot better about your body. And of course, make sure that you have healthy eating and exercise habits. For people who are very overweight, every five pounds makes a difference in how you feel in the bedroom. So getting yourself in better shape too can definitely help mentally. Uh, your partner's just not that into you. Yeah, sometimes That's a that, tough one to overcome. <laughs> it, it is and it's not because sometimes after years of resentment, years and years, resentments pile. And if they don't get talked about, it comes out in a sex life. So sometimes something as simple as having a conversation where you approach your partner in a way that's not accusatory, mm -hmm. that's very loving and saying, hey, what's going on? I feel like we're not connecting. Is there something else happening? Let's talk about it. Something as simple as that can open up okay. a discussion that can change. Things. And we only have about 30 seconds for this, but when there is a problem, don't automatically turn to the drugs like Viagra, which can actually cause more problems. And one of the problems with Viagra is a lot of men are shutting off emotionally in terms of the intimacy and they're not taking into account. It takes women longer to warm up. Sometimes men are taking a pill, they're ready to go, and women are not. So it's important for men to be more sensitive to that issue. Some great tips and good to have you here. It's so nice to have you here in person. It's my pleasure. Dr. Jen Berman for us this morning.